Hello to all. I am Vishnu. In this video, I am going to talk to you about some amazing pharmacological facts. So, this is actually a series that I wish to begin from today. And maybe every day or maybe every alternate day based on my uh, time schedule or the free time that I have, I'll be sharing some amazing pharmacological facts. So, basically, you know, we always struggle in remembering pharmacology because we don't try to understand why things occur. So that means we have to target the pharmacological actions. So today I'll be talking about two or three, you know, amazing facts, which I hope will definitely interest you. So the first topic that I'm going to talk about is anticholinergics. Now, if you refer anticholinergics, you know very well that anticholinergics block all the secretions of our body because it acts opposite to that of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine increases all the secretions of your body and anticholinergics block all the secretions of your body. But there is a problem. Anticholinergics also block the secretions of your sweat glands. So the sweat glands are present on our body and sweat is produced. And when sweat is produced, it cools your temperature. That means it maintains thermoregulation. Anticholinergics by blocking sweat glands, sweat will not be produced. Now, this is a matter of concern because sweat is actually an excretory material. So, in our sweat, there are a lot of waste materials. And if anticholinergics block the production of sweat, that means the waste materials will stay in our body and that can lead to rise in temperature. So you can feel feverish. So that is why if any person is on anticholinergic therapy for a long period of time, they may experience fevers without any reason. So it's not necessary that it may be for a long period of time. It can be for a short period also depending on the patient condition. But this is very, very interesting. So that is why anticholinergics may precipitate fever as a side effect because it blocks the sweat glands of our body. So when sweat glands are blocked, sweat is not produced and when sweat is not produced, the waste materials stay in our body and when waste materials stay in our body, it produces pyrexia or it produces fever. Now there is another fact with anticholinergics, it can cause memory loss. This is very very interesting. It can cause memory loss. Now, I'll tell you the reason why. See, we have five types of muscarinic receptors. M1, M2, M3, M4 and M5. M1 receptors are found in the CNS. And M1 receptors have two basic functions. Number one, it improves your memory. And number two, it reduces the release of dopamine. And that is why cholinergic agents usually can precipitate Parkinsonian features because when it reduces the release of dopamine, when dopamine in the CNS is low, it causes Parkinsonism. And that is also the reason why cholinergic agents are used in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. So we have Rivastigmine, Donepezil and all these kind of things because they activate M1 receptors in the CNS and that is good for cognition and memory. Now, anticholinergics, they block muscarinic receptors. So, definitely they will block M1 receptors also. When M1 receptors are blocked, number one, it prevents the blockade of dopamine release. So, that means it will increase the level of dopamine. And number two, it will reduce your cognition. So, it can cause memory loss. And this is also another reason why anticholinergics should be avoided in elderly as much as possible because as the age increases, there is always a risk of dementia, memory loss and all these things. Anticholinergics can precipitate that or worsen it much more by blocking M1 receptors in the brain which is responsible for memory and cognition. So this is also interesting. This is why we need to understand and study. So obviously your study will always become very, very interesting and very, very 
you know, you will not find it like an obligation. You will definitely become obsessed to it. Now, uh, if you talk about another interesting aspect of anticholinergics, anticholinergics also should be used very carefully in the elderly because it precipitates sedation also in some cases. Now, I'll tell you the reason why. Cholinergic nervous system makes you alert. Always remember, acetylcholine makes you alert. And that is also the reason why acetylcholine will increase all the secretions of your body. So, in one way or the other, it makes you alert. Anticholinergic does exactly the opposite. And that is why sedation is very, very commonly seen with anticholinergics. Or with any medicine that has anticholinergic properties, you will always find sedation attached to it. Like for example, chlorpromazine. It is an antipsychotic. It is a low potency antipsychotic. It has anticholinergic properties. It causes sedation. Tricyclic antidepressants. It is an antidepressant. It has H1 blocking effect. So it al already causes sedation. But it has anticholinergic property also due to which it can cause sedation. So this is also interesting. Cholinergic nervous system usually reduces your blood pressure, can cause bradycardia. Anticholinergics usually cause tachycardia, they increase your blood pressure. So these are some interesting things that I wanted to share about anticholinergics. And one more point I missed. Since anticholinergics precipitate fever as a side effect, they should be avoided as much as possible in patients who are suffering from neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a life-threatening condition in which the temperature of your body can exceed 104 degree Fahrenheit, that is 40 degrees Celsius. So you know very well why I said that anticholinergics should be avoided because anticholinergics block the sweat glands. When sweat glands are blocked, sweat is not produced. When sweat is not produced, your temperature increases and in a patient with neuroleptic malignant syndrome, this is not at all a good news. So, anticholinergics should be avoided. Now, let's come to another interesting aspect and this is regarding theophylline. I was actually making some notes I make on a daily basis regarding amazing facts of pharmacology. So, I just came across a very interesting aspect of theophylline. So, theophylline, you know very well, it's a bronchodilator, which is used in the treatment of asthma, COPD and all these things. It has bronchodilatory action. Now, please remember, theophylline is a caffeine derivative as well. Caffeine increases urine production. It causes diuresis. Caffeine has a property to cause diuresis. So, definitely theophylline also has diuretic property. Caffeine is a CNS stimulant, so theophylline also has CNS stimulant property. Other than that, theophylline has some effects. Now, let's talk about its pharmacological actions. This medicine blocks adenosine A1 receptors, adenosine type A1 receptors, and that can cause three problems. If adenosine A1 receptors are blocked, it can cause arrhythmias, it can cause seizures, and it can precipitate diuresis. Okay, so theophylline by blocking adenosine A1 receptors causes seizures, diuresis, and arrhythmias. This drug also blocks phosphodiesterase type 3 receptors. PDE is the short form, phosphodiesterase type 3 receptors, and that can also lead to arrhythmias. So by blocking adenosine A1 receptors also it causes arrhythmia, and by blocking phosphodiesterase type 3 receptors also, it causes arrhythmia. And the last amazing aspect is, this medicine also blocks phosphodiesterase type 4 receptors. That leads to nausea vomiting, gastrointestinal symptoms and headache. So, headache is a common side effect that is seen with theophylline. The reason is, this medicine blocks phosphodiesterase type 4 receptors which causes this side effect. So, this is these are some amazing facts that I thought I'll share with you. I hope this video is informative for you. See you in the next video. Until then, it's bye.